Hey everybody. Um, so uh, a little while ago I did like a poll. Um, when you reach 500 subscribers, you, uh, YouTube lets you um, do like community posts where you can do like polls, ask people questions and stuff. Um, so I asked you guys like what your favorite kind of video was and like 50% said, uh, said the terrain stuff. Um, and then like one person said, you know, they, they missed the battle reports. We're, we're trying to get back to that. Like we, um, I would love to get back into doing like Frostgrave and um, one page rules and uh, there's a bunch of games that we're, you know, we're kind of playing and then um, not recording. <laughs> So, but about that, about one page rules, um, so I, uh, I, I, I got, I, you know, I wanted to have some terrain to just play like, uh, like a city fight kind of game with, um, like we've been getting into, uh, firefight, which is one page rules version of like kill team, you know, way better, way better game. But, um, so what I got was this, um, this foreground kit and, uh, this, um, this kit, it's like, um, so for me, like the, the top three kind of like terrain, uh, MDF guys are foreground is one of them. And then Cromlech, they're the people that make the official Frostgrave stuff. And then like Sarissa, Sarissa Precision models, they're up there, you know, top three. And then like, um, uh, who's, who's the other one? There's you know, there's some other ones that are like, that are in there too, but they're kind of like the top three for me. And like I've talked about foreground before. Uh, in fact, like there's even people that commented on the, uh, the fantasy foreground stuff. They're like, hey, do you have any like sci-fi, you know, MDF tips? Uh, so yeah, so we're doing, we're doing it, we're doing it right now. <laughs> um, so I, I think that this kit is just super, super useful. Like, you know, Cromlech, the, the, like, if you get a giant tower, like a wizard tower, you know, for Frostgrave, it's very, like, situational that you're going to use that, you know? Whereas, like, stuff like this, where you just have a whole bunch of, like, little, bombed out corners that are like totally modular where you can stack them on top of each other or you can you know like build like this this box that I got I think it was like $55 and then that's enough uh, it comes with enough bombed out corners to fill a like a 4x4 four four table with small uh, short buildings or if you got like two boxes of the stuff, you could easily fill out like a four by four table with some like pretty big, good sized buildings. So that's like a hundred bucks, you know, to fill out a, a, a big table worth of buildings. And um, it's like if that was, if it was plastic, that would cost a fortune. Um, but so you can't, and then, so yeah, we're gonna get there. But uh, but I feel like you, it's it's pretty easy to make MDF look like you know up there with like the quality of like injection molded plastic models. So like foreground, I feel like they make the most like modular kind of useful utilitarian stuff. Like Chrome, like it's like if you if you want a giant wizard's tower for Frostgrave, they make an awesome one. Um, you know, like Sarissa Precision, if you want a, a Buddhist temple, you know, like a, uh, a Japanese Shinto temple or something, like they make a really awesome one, but it's, but it's not as useful as stuff like this. So I think this is like a really good buy where it's just going to make it into like every game that you, like we've, in, in all the games of Firefight that we've played, this stuff has made it into every single one of them, except one, except one game. So, so we just use it constantly. 
But, uh, but anyways, yeah, so... It's a little tight how mine fits, because of how I did it. But I've got some, uh, some speed painting tips for you. Uh, quick, pain, you know, quick, easy, like the, the putting them together took longer than the painting. Uh, spray paint, tile grout, stuff like that. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's do some painting. All right, so I've already put some of this stuff together. Um, the uh, <clears throat> foreground, usually they have some directions on their website. These do not have directions. Um, <clears throat> what you're supposed to do with these is basically you go uh, sprue by sprue, and then you just kind of assemble what's on that, that piece. Um, so, yeah, just show you some of the stuff, take a look at it. So here's like a complete one. Um, I've, I've put together several floors of this stuff already and we played multiple games on it and it's, it's, it's great stuff. Um, but I'll show you like how this is kind of supposed to work. Um, so take one uh, sheet, right, <clears throat> and then you uh, make a floor. So there's going to be two floors on this one. And uh, this is going to be like the fascia part that goes on the, um, oh, actually that might be, or yeah, so, so there's like fascia pieces and then there's like the actual walls that kind of key together and then pop onto these. So yeah, you go like that and then like that. And then you just kind of go piece by piece. So these are going to have um, wall sections that line up with them. Let's see, yeah, this one and this one are going to line up. So, like that. And like that. And then that sort of hides the um, the teeth part at the bottom, <clears throat> where they uh, they they key together so that these can be they can either stand on their own like this and just be little scatter you know little little wall pieces, or they can um, fit on top of each other. So, yeah, I think it's a really cool design. I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, so, anyways, I'll show you how I've been gluing these up, too. Um, so they, they key in really, really tight. I mean, there's, there's just not much room for, uh, like, any kind of a tough glue. Um, so... What I've been doing is putting uh, putting glue in in between the the pieces like where they instead of into the little tabs and then cleaning up squeeze out I'll put it in between the little sections so okay I need to I need to get glue okay so um, <clears throat> after putting a few of these together. I think that this is the best way to do it. Um, so each uh, piece is going to have either one or two floors on it. And then this is how they recommend it too, is to, so you just work uh, piece by piece and then just put together everything that's on one uh, panel, one sprue of um, MDF, right? So 
the the way that these work is that uh, they have these little teeth that uh, key together with the uh, the floor pieces, and um, and then you put the fish on, and then these kind of lock them in place for little window sills. Um, so what I have here, <laughs> this is a uh, uh, PVA glue. This is just a, it's a really strong PVA glue. It's a craft glue. Um, so one of the things that's nice about um, PVA glue is that it is well, it's let's see, it's water soluble. So you know you can it kind of thin it down to the right consistency. Like I have a, a paintbrush here. I mean, this is a really cracked out paintbrush. I'm not going to use a good paintbrush to paint glue with. Um, and uh, and then you just kind of paint it in there. And you know, it will come out of the brush eventually. But also, um, PVA glue is is they call it a book binder glue, or it's like the um, school glue and all that. It's the, it's the stuff that you would use to glue paper together. You know, it's water soluble, non-toxic, so it's good for kids and stuff. That's why they call it school glue. Um, but it's also, oh, and also these have texture on the sides. So there's one piece that goes in and then one piece that goes out. So you keep, keep track of which side you're putting on. So yeah, but about PVA glue. So it also, it, it creates a really strong bond with fibrous materials like wood or paper. Um, so it's, it's kind of ideal for stuff like this because I have put the pieces on the wrong way before. I didn't know that these need to face on the inside and not out. So if you're using super glue or something like that, it's kind of like you have to commit. <laughs> And then with this stuff, it has a little bit of a working time. You can kind of like deal with the squeeze out and stuff like that with just water. Um, and it's also just going to create a super strong bond later with wood products. So, and then this piece has the, the fascia piece has the little um, texture on the outside going out. So... A lot of surface area on here. I'm just gonna kind of slather this with glue all over. And I really do think this is the best way to do these, in my in my humble opinion. So I'm just going to line those up a little bit and it does have a little working time. So I do have a minute to do this. Um, okay, pop that on there. Like that. And then I like these little, um, I like to use these uh, binder clips um, to uh, just hold things together. But um, so on this side, you can see that these just kind of line up like that. But on this side, they actually have these little windowsill things that go together. Um, and make sure that that's gonna get rid of any little edges that won't fit in there. Uh, so take a little glue and then just pop it into the little windowsill area. And I like that better because the it just locks everything in place and then it has its little, everything keys together in its own little spot.
think so. I'm running out of binder clips. The one thing about PVA is that it just takes forever to dry, but still. Like I think wood, wood glue, you're supposed to wait at least 24 hours if you're doing something with wood and you want to work on it again. You're supposed to like apply the glue and then wait till the next day, 24 hours before you actually start, you know, grinding on it with power tools or whatever. That's, uh, I think that's the best way to kind of glue these up at least. Okay, so before I, um, I'm going to take everything out to spray paint when it's dry. But uh, before I do that, I want to create some rubble kind of stuff. Um, so I have like little, I like to use um, cork as a, uh, as a basing material. Um, like, grab a mini, like, like this, you know, to make, um, like cool little bases with, but then the leftover bits, I save them. <laughs> uh, and then even like when it has like little hard edges on it, it actually looks kind of cool for like rubble. Um, so, and it, and it, it wants to be glued. It loves to be glued up. So, uh. Yeah, I'm gonna take some like some pieces of cork board and uh, uh, also uh, kitty litter. Um, <laughs> so I have I have kitty litter here, and this stuff uh, soaks up stuff. You know, um, loves to be like glued and painted and um, yeah. So I'm just going to put some like, kind of like rubble and stuff in there and uh, glue that all up too. And uh, yeah, a little bit of, have some fine grit sand too. Um, And then this is just sand that I got from the creek and then put it, uh, sifted out the, the big chunky stuff and then it's just the fine little bit that's left over. But that's just going to create some cool uh, kind of texture stuff. And then um, another thing that I have too is... Um, or, or what I what I want to use, I, I'm trying out a new um, scenery glue. So this is it's um, it's a it's a special recipe. <laughs> um, but what it does is that it, it already has like rubbing alcohol in it, um, and then it's like matte medium acrylic matte medium, and basically what it does is that it has no surface tension. So it just uh, runs right into uh, stuff like this all over and then just seals it down. So, um, and then it's basically, it's um, like one part glue and then, uh, or sorry, one part uh, matte medium and then three parts half and half water and uh, rubbing alcohol. But it works way better for um, scenery glue. It's a it's a really really good uh, combination. Okay, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a bunch of I'm, I'm gonna put rubble around on on everybody like that. Okay, so for the uh, next part, I'm gonna take everything outside and spray paint it. I've got a whole bunch of these that are ready to go in my glue up wet wet paint tray um and uh, i'm going to take all of these outside and spray paint them but okay because it's uh 
It's a clear day outside here, but it's pretty windy. And uh, I live next to, no, close to a fire station. <laughs> and I don't want to talk over like rattle cans and wind and the fire trucks and ambulances going by. What I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna record it doing this step and then I'm gonna walk you through it down here uh, where you can actually hear me. <laughs> um, so, okay, so first off, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit everything with uh, this um, Rust-Oleum chalky finish, chalky gray charcoal spray paint. So I like to take a, um, a cardboard box and then cut out a couple of the sides and make a little spray booth and then uh, leave like a little flap of cardboard and use it as a tray to kind of turn the piece and get good coverage. And you know, you could absolutely do this with an airbrush. It's just that the spray can is like rough and ready, ready to go. You know, it's like, it, it even has a little bit of texture to it. It has this nice ultra matte finish. And um, it's like, it is one tough layer of paint for, uh, for a primer layer. And uh, it's even gonna do like a little bit of gap filling if there's any spots in like the glue up that I, uh, that I messed up. So <clears throat> as I'm going around doing the, the spray paint, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let that spray paint be uh, wet for a little bit and then I'm going to dust it with some tile grout. And then the tile grout is going to stick to it and give it a little bit of texture. And uh, it just kind of has that, um, it looks like sort of like um, cement, you know, because tile grout is like cement. Um, and then it just adds that little bit of of texture that kind of looks like a stucco or it looks like a cement wall or something like that and it adds a little bit of texture to everything uh, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and hit it again with the uh, with the chalky gray finish spray paint and um, and sort of seal it down because I do want that color that's gonna be my my dark color and then um, while everything is still wet, I'm actually going to go back over it with another color of spray paint. That's just like, it's another, it's another color of the Rust-Oleum chalky finish line, but this one has just, it's just a lighter gray instead of the charcoal gray. And then you get this kind of interesting wet blending streaky effect going on with the spray paint and you get some natural highlights and shadows. So, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, and we're back. Um, <laughs> that's what I did with these. And then you can see that like, there's this kind of interesting like streaky effect that happens with the, um, with the, the spray paints as they, they like kind of cure together. And then, um, you know, if you, if you want to, what you can do is you can mask off these little teeth, like where they fit into each other. Um, mine fit just fine, but it's a little bit tight. Um, it's a, it's, but I like it like that. So it just, you know, it's the, that spray paint is just going to make a really, really tough layer of paint, um, for the next, part. Um, and you know, one thing that I did that I'm kind of bummed out about a little bit was that, uh, on a bunch of these, um, I, when I was gluing them up, I was over at a friend's house and we wanted to play firefight. And, uh, and then I, um, I basically, I put this texture part, uh, on the wrong side because I wasn't paying attention. There's a bunch of them that are like that. Not not the majority, but you know, plenty. Um, but this part doing this this texture is gonna cover up a lot of that stuff, but you can still see it. You know, it still looks cool. Like these um these windows have little frames and you know it just has this little 
thing kind of running along the this little, these little running boards and stuff and then the the outside kind of has some cool texture too but uh but anyways okay so i'm gonna do that with all these i'm gonna record it I'm gonna play it over me tell you all that uh and then uh, we're gonna move on to the next step with these ones. All right, so <clears throat> I have some uh, cheapo craft paint, and then this is this is folk art. This stuff is really really inexpensive, but I actually really like this stuff. I think it is great paint for um, especially for stuff like this, like big terrain pieces. You don't want to use your good miniature paints to do um, terrain. It's just it's, it's just a waste of money. So um, I'm just gonna do some dry brushing and then uh, I really like this color. It's this um, uh, prairie sage and it has it's this this kind of like muted light gray with a little bit of green in it and uh, it just makes a really nice like highlight for like stone and uh, you know stuff like this where um, it's, it just uh, it makes that that highlight just kind of pop out and it's but it's not really stark it just uh, you know it's a nice highlight so I'm just gonna go around and I've got a big makeup brush and then I like this one this uh, for like big chunky terrain stuff it's flat and then it, I think it's I think it's a shader. It's just like an elf makeup brush. And then these things are like two dollars, you know, at like Target or Walmart, wherever places like that. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of get some of those um, those details, like um, anything that's like popping out that I want to kind of bring up, you know, create some more. Um, contrast so it's also kind of kind of even out the um, the zenithal because you can see that like on these like there's there's the the dark and then there's you know the the light parts and so I can just kind of go around and kind of even that out a little bit so that they look okay when they're stacked on top of each other like this Kind of blend that stuff together a little bit. But I do want to create some like highlights on this stuff because when I do the like oil wash, the kind of pin wash later, the highlights are going to stay and then it's going to kind of develop the, the texture and the shadows and stuff later. Okay, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I went ahead, did all the rest of this stuff. Um, you can see just how much terrain you get for, you know, like 50 bucks or whatever this kit is. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> so I used up a whole um, tube of this stuff on it. <clears throat> so anyways, now what I want to do is I'm gonna make an oil wash and you know again don't use your good like streaking grime or whatever your your good oil paints to um, do an oil wash um, so I have what I have is <laughs> when I was in art school that we had a teacher who said that she was allergic to oil paints and then she still wanted us to do oil painting in her class so she made us buy these stupid uh, water mixable um, oil paints. There is no such thing. Oil paints are not water soluble. Um, but these, and it was like she got mad at us for using uh, thinner in the class too, to like paint with them like actual oil paints. Don't buy these, but I'm still using them, you know, they're like, the ch they're really cheap, um, cheap oil paints, but, um, I, uh, they, the one thing about these is that 
they do dry very fast. So they're, they're supposedly water mixable oil paints. There's no such thing. It doesn't exist. Water, water, oil paints are not water soluble. Um, but so you can see with like the dry brush, um, I've kind of like gone around and hit everything. And then there's parts where like this, um, the, the tile grout kind of chipped off and it leaves a cool looking effect. But there's spots where I like couldn't reach with the, the big makeup brush. But that's totally cool because it soaks up paint really well. And then I'm going to go around and uh, put oil wash on it. And then it's going to fill in. It's going to kind of seep into those low spots. And then I can take like a tape, paper towel or something and dab it off the top. Where I don't want it to leave my highlights. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use up, uh, let's see, the rest of this tube of burnt umber. Um, and then I have some raw umber too. And what umber is, is it's just a, it's a pigment. It's like an earth pigment. Um, they literally dig it out of the ground. You know, all of your, like, old kind of Renaissance pigments, they... They mostly like just dug them out of the ground to get the color or they like ground up gemstones and things like that to get nice blue colors. And um, So these in burnt umber, raw umber, yellow ochre, all those pigments are actual earth colors and they make uh, really nice uh, dirt washes for your terrain. <laughs> This is the kind of stuff that you learn in art school. So, anyways, what I am going to use though um, is um, I'm going to use mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits. Oh, is this mineral spirits? Yeah, it is. Yeah, they just say it's brush cleaner, but it's actually odorless mineral spirits. But make sure that you get the odorless stuff because. The stuff that is not odorless smells like paint thinner, and it will knock you on your butt. Um, so I'm going, um, I mean like, ton, a uh, ton of thinner to paint. Like I don't even know how much, um, uh, like, um, at least like four to one or something like that, thinner to paint. And then I'm gonna uh, thin it down and then I basically just wanna make like a dirt kind of wash to go over everything. Um, and then I'm not gonna use my good brushes, you know, I've got a craft brush, a plastic craft brush. Great for doing oil washes, painting with glue, all that. So I'm actually even going to thin that out a little bit more. I'm going to add a little more mineral spirits. And I'm just going to keep this jar, um, keep this around if in case I want to do an oil wash on another project like this, like terrain. I'm not sure that I would use this on minis. Um, you might get some undesirable effects, but on big terrain pieces like this, you do not want to use your good paints. It's just a huge waste of money. All right, and now uh, I'm just gonna go all over on uh, on everybody. And um, the, yeah, like I said, the nice thing about this stuff is that it's just gonna kind of run all over like that. And then kind of seep into the cracks. And even like um, on uh, like raised little like chunky bits like this, it'll still kind of add some definition. And then if I don't want it somewhere, I can just kind of dab it off. Because the oil takes, even when it dries fast like this stuff does, it's still, um, it still takes forever to dry. So I'm not going to put it everywhere. I'm just going to kind of put it in, uh, I just want to like add some, some tone, you know, kind of break things up and like, 
uh, make things look nice and dirty, but I do want to leave like some of this uh, plaster stuff kind of just, but I don't want it to look like fresh, you know, I want it to look like dirty. Um, but that's just going to kind of uh, develop those, uh, those colors and stuff, you know. But there's nothing like oil paint for uh, making things look dirty. <laughs> oil paint just like, it's uh, doing an oil wash, it makes things look nice and dirty. And also the, um, the mineral spirits is not going to reactivate acrylic. Um, and I, I don't think it's gonna do anything to the spray paint either. Um, but it, uh, the acrylic is not um, mineral spirit soluble either. So don't worry about like reactivating any of the dry brush or anything like that. Just, um, just gonna slop it on and then take it off where you don't want it on your, on your highlights. And I'm kind of going, you know, I'm dragging it down to get some kind of streakies going down. All right, so not only did I go through a whole jar of this stuff, this is the, the second batch. So I, I made like two jars of this stuff and almost went through two of them. But you can see how the, um, the oil just kind of seeps into the cracks and then it um it it makes it not so like one note and and just totally gray you know it makes it look uh kind of like dirty and dingy and uh yeah so i think that's gonna be it and then i'm gonna sh i'm gonna post some pictures of like what kind of stuff you can make with these like how you can fill out a table with this stuff but I think it is like super super just useful utilitarian kind of terrain stuff where you can make all kinds of stuff out of these and uh, you're gonna use it in like every game you know so anyways yeah thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one